Rabbits have been treated in the veterinary practice for centuries. These docile creatures can easily become stressed, leading to health concerns and injury, especially when handled incorrectly. In this video, exotics and wildlife expert David Clevin will discuss how to safely handle rabbits. David Clevin is here with us, who's an exotics and wildlife expert with many years of experience in handling exotics. And today he's going to talk to us about the many types of mammals that we may see in our veterinary practice. Now, David, what are we going to begin with? Well, we're going to begin with a rabbit, and rabbits are very common pets these days, especially around springtime. We seem to see a lot of people getting rabbits, but a lot of times they get the rabbit and they don't really, you know, know how to handle them themselves. And so, handling a rabbit, you have to be very careful in the way you handle them. And so, I've got the crate sitting here because the first thing you're going to have to do many times is get the rabbit out of the crate, especially if it's an owner that hasn't handled theirs much. And the rules, whenever you take an animal out of their travel crate, there's always just assume that they might try and dart out and so you always use your body to put in front now with a rabbit you never want to pick them up by the ears because of course the ears you could very you could injure them and when you have the animal facing you um, you want to kind of get your hands underneath and scoot them out like that and of course we got some newspaper in here so I'm just gonna tuck him down nice and close so that he doesn't have to worry about support. Rabbits feel the safest when they have the feet underneath them, when they can feel their feet touching something. Many times people want to pick the rabbits up and hold on to them, which you can do when you're straining them for a procedure. But when you first get them out, um, what you probably want to do is just let them stay on the table. If you want to have something for give them a little grip, you can do that. But simply what you can do is if you need to do something back here, is just kind of use your body and just kind of bring them into the crook of your arm there that way you can kind of cover up their eyes and it's kind of nice and dark and they can get back here and check things out when you need to check them out in front of course you're going to want to turn them around and when you pick them up at any point you have to remember how sharp their claws are so you're going to want to support them and so what i always do is i tuck my hand underneath the, the uh, back feet there you can even sometimes hook the feet between your fingers like that that way they can't kick out from underneath you put your hand on top and always make sure that you keep the rabbit's body with their back arched like this nice and even you don't want them to have a chance to kick and extend their feet out rabbit could easily break their back you also always want to keep your hand on top of them there to keep them from being able to jump out of your hands whenever you're working with rabbits there are some special considerations that we need to keep in mind uh, for example, rabbits um, can break their backs fairly easily. They have very strong um, back muscles and very strong back legs because they hop. Uh, they have comparatively very weak skeletons, and this combination of things makes it easier for them to break their backs. So whenever we're working with rabbits, we need to make sure that their backs are well supported. So if we have to move them from one place to another, uh, we have to either uh, tuck, their, tuck them into our arms or support their rump with our hand. Uh, and when we're working with them and they're starting to really thump and struggle, we might need to give them a break to protect their backs. And then when you're ready to put the rabbit back inside their crate, same thing, keep your hand over the top and just use your whole body to kind of ease them back in, just like that. Another special consideration with rabbits is when you're working with especially nervous rabbits. Most rabbits will tolerate you doing an exam on an exam room table, just like you would do a cat. Occasionally we have rabbits that are very frightened and skittish and they will try to jump off the table, which can lead them to hurt themselves. So if I find a patient to be that frightened, usually I think what works well is to bring your exam down to the floor. So the assistant and the doctor can both kneel down or sit down on the floor put a towel out, you can look at the rabbit while it's on the floor and as needed, gently put it into your lap to look at the feet, for example, or the abdomen um, or the urogenital region. So you just need to adjust your handling so the rabbit stays safe. A final concern with rabbits is that they usually are pretty quiet patients in the exam room. Um, guinea pigs talk about everything. They're going to scream that you felt their belly and, you know, be mad that you picked them up. Uh, but rabbits usually are quiet. So if a rabbit is starting to vocalize, especially if it's starting to scream, that means the rabbit is extremely frightened and could even get so frightened that it dies. So if you start to hear a rabbit screaming, you need to put it in a dark 
quiet, safe place, um, give it a break, and reassess what you're trying to accomplish so that you can do it in a way that is safe for the rabbit.